All right, good evening everyone and welcome to Overseas Genealogy One Site at a Time. We thought we would take a little trip around the world tonight and look at various international sources for finding genealogy records. This would be in addition to, of course, your searching on Ancestry or Heritage Quest or Family Search and those type of databases. I'm Kate and this is Melissa and we welcome you to the program tonight. So let me share my screen and we will get going. All right, if everyone can see that, here's Overseas Genealogy, one site at a time. All right, so when you're searching internationally, you'll see, and I'm not going to talk about everything that you see on the slide, but your goal basically is to save time by working efficiently. And that's what Kate and I wanted to accomplish and provide you all with a great listing of where you can go right off the bat rather than going on Google and typing in something like Ireland genealogy because you're only going to get an mass amount of hits and you're going to become tired, you're going to feel bogged down, and you're going to waste a lot of time. So if you don't write fast enough, I would encourage you just to take a photo of the actual slide. Right. But again, this is to save you time. One way you can save time is to use checklists and forms. Ancestry has a great amount of those on their actual website and you can get access through the library at home during the COVID pandemic. And then those forms and checklists, in addition to what you can print out, you can also create your own obviously. And those are to keep you from working in circles. Um, and you also want to, when you are asking relatives and cousins, aunts, uncles, you want to create a list where you have targeted questions. So that way you're not just asking things that aren't going to allow you to get at the information you want, such as, you know, when did this happen? Or do you remember where Uncle Lou was before he came to Chicago and started working at the International Harvesting Company, things like that. Do you remember if he, you know, traveled a lot, what states he had been in? Sometimes those clues will direct you um, to a valuable resource that you need to uh, be looking into. But again, these little checklists provided by the magazines, um, just go ahead and take a snapshot and that should help you when you're just beginning the preliminary stage of the searching internationally. And then the second slide that Kate will show you uh, when searching internationally. A lot so of times Kate and I will get you. a question like, oh, well, you know, it's just all on the computer. Why can't I get it? It's not all on the computer. This is what international archives look like. And this is what a lot of archives in the United States look like. This is the reality. What you get through Ancestry.com, Family Search, things like that, that is the exception this is what actual archives are. So when you can't find something, this is what different countries have to go through in order to put things online. And a lot of times they don't have the volunteers, the employees, the money, the time. So they just sit on the shelves like this. So again, just go ahead and take a picture of the information that's provided here. It is a different from what I'm gonna highlight. But when you are looking at ports of arrival, the idea is to associate the immigration wave to the accurate port of arrival. And that will cut down a lot of time as far as wasted searching. Remember that not everyone came to Ellis Island. Um, you'll see the actual percentage right there. I listed the top ports for you. So that way, if you're looking for in New York and you've been looking for years and you can't find anything, that reason could be that your ancestors came through Baltimore or New Orleans and everyone has this preconceived notion that, oh, well, it was New York. It's just the most publicized in history books. That's why a lot of people tend to gravitate towards that. Um, and you also want to follow the ethnic group and find major destinations for the ethnic group for that decade. 
Now, when I say for that decade, it's just to help you narrow down the search rather than saying, oh, well, for, you know, 50 years or 100 years, um, and Romanians were coming in through Ontario and Southern California. I just threw those out there. It's not actually probably accurate. But just to give you an idea, breaking down by decade, a lot of times more people came over from certain areas of a country at certain times than at other times. So by looking at small blocks of time, that will save you a lot of time in your research. And remember that a lot of times neighbors and whole villages uprooted together whether or not your ancestors had siblings that came over or cousins isn't always a dead end. Sometimes they may have been an only child for whatever reason and they came over um, shortly before or shortly after some neighbors and some distant relatives that still lived in the same village. So if you can't specifically find your relative, it's always beneficial for your research to try and look at the area what in Chicago or New York and see where other people are coming from. And that might give you an indicator as to where your ancestor came from. Now, the mm -hmm. other way to do it is also if you have religious ancestors and they were affiliated with a particular parish or synagogue, things like that, you could always try contacting the um, religious establishment in that neighborhood at the time and seeing if they will either look it up for you or allow you to look in their books to find that information. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. And they don't have to because it's a private institution. So it's best to be extra respectful and extra polite if you're trying to get information from them because they don't have to hand it over. I just want to highlight too, we did give you the four major waves of immigration. So that should give you a time period if you're lacking one. What about Miami being a port? I think Miami is more of a port in present day time. So 1965 to present. Um, and you'll see that right down there. It says largely Asia and Latin America. And there also is a website that will uh, have you go through the migration trends. And if you go to, I would, yeah, um, I would say go to uh, the Family Search Wiki and then type in Florida Ports and then see what sort of information they have that comes up through there. Because uh, the Family Search Wiki is also going to be beneficial when you're looking for the different countries. Uh, they have also done a lot of legwork and have everything compiled in a uh, easily digestible format on those web page. And we will have the link um, further in on other slides that um, reiterates that type of uh, family search information. Uh, as we said, before we take our little round the world trip, we can start with our domestic database searching, Ancestry Library Edition, which is available through the library and is now free for home access until the end of the year. Thank you, Ancestry. Or if you have a paid Ancestry.com subscription, uh, they do have a large section on immigration and travel uh, that uh, you can uh, start searching for immigration records. We also subscribe to Heritage Quest, which is owned by Ancestry. Uh, and they also have census and immigration and cemeteries and other uh, location records as well. So those would be the two main paid databases that you can access through our library uh, or your home library. Most libraries have these databases. So again, as we said, make a research plan to stay organized and get your checklists together so you know who you talk to and where you found your information. We had a question. Yes. Um, how do you get to those databases? Through the, uh, go through our library, balibrary.org, and then uh, there's a tab under the big search box toward the top right that says databases, and then uh, there's an alphabetical listing there, so you would go to Ancestry Library Edition or scoot down to the H section for Heritage Quest. Uh, Family Search is also on there, so that'd be uh, another one that you would want to use. 
Very good. Uh, so a little more on Ancestry. As we said, it has census, immigration, ethnic records, and so forth. It has the free printable charts and forms uh, so to keep uh, your records straight. And it, when you search the immigration and travel section, uh, you can add a relative so you can limit your amounts, but you don't want to limit too much because it might eliminate a record that you're searching for. So you have to kind of find a balance between finding three records and 30,000 records. And when you find a, a record and go into it, usually on the right side, there will be uh, more sources and then you can check those sources uh, for your search. And the nice thing about Ancestry is at the bottom of the uh, collection, it will tell you where they got it, what's in it and so forth. So uh, you will get another uh, place to look possibly. When you use Heritage Quest, they have the census and immigration and cemetery records. And uh, you can use this from home all the time. It's not limited. So it's uh, very good for census and immigration uh, searching, but it doesn't have the printable charts or forms. So as Melissa mentioned, international websites do not contain all of the records held within a country, but they are coming online very quickly all the time. Now, and uh, as she mentioned, religious organizations and other uh, archives can be private. And so those institutions don't have to put their information online if they don't want to. And you will find that it goes both ways. But more and more are coming online. Domestic websites, it's just a listing of a bunch of helpful websites that we find useful in our work, uh, starting with Billion Graves, Cindy's List, Ellis Island. In addition to Ancestry and Heritage Quest, some of the websites that you would want to use in order to find international records are Cindy's List and the Family Search Wiki. Cindy's List is a giant catalog of genealogy internet sites on the web. And I mean giant, she's got everything on there and she will break that out by country. So if you're looking for a particular country's information, you can go to Cindy's List, pick out that country and find a list of sources uh, on the, the internet. Family Search Wiki also does a very similar thing. You can uh, pick a country and you can pull up the sites that they link to and they will tell you if they're free, if they're paid and so forth. But it's a uh, veritable cornucopia of uh, foreign websites on the Family Search Wiki. So we recommend that you use those two when you're not sure uh, what sites to look at. And that makes it, and it narrows it down quite a bit for you instead of just Googling Ireland genealogy, as we mentioned. Um, but Google can be your friend, especially when you don't have anywhere to look. Uh, you can certainly type in Ireland online genealogy websites and see what comes up. Other things that we use in our work are find a grave, internment, internment.net, and billion graves. Everyone, uh, should be familiar with those probably. If not, let us know and we will and we can show you uh, an, an example from that. But uh, Find a Grave is uh, great and it is international. So, uh, so is Billion Graves and internment.net. And these are people that just go out and photograph cemeteries and put the information that they find there up. Thank you. And uh, that helps us tremendously, especially finding uh, overseas cemeteries. Hmm. We have the uh, Alice Island link there. Again, if, you're, if you know your uh, relatives came uh, over uh, and went through Alice Island, there's a website that you can search uh, for that name right there. Uh, another uh, one that I tend to use is the uh, uh, FEEFHS for Eastern European Resources. Um, it uh, lists resources by country, uh, online resources. So that's a good place to go to. It's, uh, Small, much smaller than like a Cindy's List or uh, even a Family Search Wiki, but it will give you places to start your search for overseas records. And uh, there's world newspapers as well, so you can uh, find foreign newspapers uh, using uh, actually Wikipedia, and there's a list of online newspaper archives. So those are some of the sites that we find useful uh, when we're working with uh, starting to work overseas. So when you do cross the pond and start getting into foreign language websites, uh, Google has a very nice translator at translate.google.com. 
And you can put in a word, you can put in a phrase, you can put in whole text, and it will do its best uh, to translate for you. You can also translate an entire website using its URL. If you're using Chrome, you can just put the, the URL into Chrome and select translate. If not, I use the something from itools.com and it's the Google Translate web page translator. So all I have to do is copy and paste my foreign language website into this and it will translate it into English for me, which is really nice. Um, also, when you're on these uh, foreign language websites, if you usually look up in the upper right, you sometimes in the upper left, uh, and you see the EN or ENG or a British flag, not often an American flag, you can click on those and they will change the website into English for you. So that's just a little tip and trick uh, that we find very useful in order to be able to read some of these overseas sites. Melissa. All right, so navigating sites, this is going to be helpful so that way you can narrow down um, where specifically you need to look um, more so in one area over the other. If this map you don't think is accurate, we understand that sometimes people don't consider certain countries to be Eastern over Central Europe. We do apologize, but it's not written by us, it's written by the World Atlas. Um, but there's just a breakdown of Europe and how it is listed according to uh, the World Atlas. So the northern area, the eastern, the western, the southern, um, it's pretty, you know, run of the mill. I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but this is how we've gone and broken down the uh, program from here on out just to make it more digestible rather than going through countries alphabetically. Not every website or not every country is going to have a website. And then at that point, we would just urge you all to uh, keep up on your wiki search through familysearch.org. And then as new information comes out, the family search website will be updated accordingly a lot faster than Kate and I can turn out programs on this. Yay, okay. So on our Northern European countries list, we have places like Denmark, Estonia, Finland, Ireland, Latvia, and Lithuania, amongst others. And these have some fairly good uh, websites that we like to use. So if we want to take a quick peek at Denmark, for example. This one, get three for one, which is always, always good. Riggs Arkvit. And on here we have Arca Valera Online, we have DAISY, and we have the DDD. I tend to use the DDD for searching a lot uh, because this is the one where you can actually put in names and uh, whereas the other two are you're mostly searching archives. But if we take a look here, and you can see not in English, but as you can see in the upper right hand corner, we've got a British flag and voila, it's in English. So always look for that. Uh, if it didn't have that, then we could highlight this and turn it, uh, uh, copy it and pull it into Chrome and have Google translate it for us or go to iTools and use the translator there. And then when, uh, it will bring it up in English for you. It'll do its best to do that. All right, so we can search uh, the probate index here, emigrants meaning those that have left the country, and they also have uh, census databases. Let's take a look at that. And I think I was in here. You pick one of these. Uh, most of the places we found, they need you to pick a place. So it helps if you can figure out where you're looking. And we'll see if we can find someone. And I will have it search. Yeah, okay. One of these works. The other ones don't. Oh, 
All right, there we go. All right, so uh, my name started with uh, N-I-E-L-S, Niels, and it brings back all this list of people with Neil at these places. So uh, this is a good start. So these would be the census records. They also have other databases, as I said, going back to English. If we look at immigrants, N I E M I N E N. Let's see what happened to the Niemann family. And we've got three. Hopefully, one of them is ours, either Tolval, David, or Ida. And this tells you. Uh, where they left from, when they left, where they were going. Again, these people ended up in Canada. These people ended up in the United States. Um, again, not the actual record, unfortunately, but you will have a code and you can uh, probably order that record from, from them. So a very good source. And as I said, you get, uh, using the link that we have here, you get three chances for one site. <laughs> instead of going to these three separately. Uh, I can show you some of my Irish relatives here. Ireland has really made an effort to put their records online. And we've got church records and civil records. You need to look at both, because as I will uh, throw this in here into church records, Stephen Scanlon. <clears throat> and yes, I am not a robot. It will do that to you. <laughs> but it's a small price to pay for finding what we're looking for here. And again, I see no, whoops, if I could spell it right, that would be good. Let's try that again. And here are my Scanlons, 47 of them. Fortunately, I know that they're in Cary, and I know that they're in Balahegi. So I can narrow that down a bit. And I can find the marriage record from 1865. Now, you will notice when you get to the bottom, this church register page containing this record has not yet been imaged. Oh, okay. But I do have a record identifier and I could order the record if I needed to. However, you might pop over to civil records and see if you can find it there. Yes, I am not a robot. Oops, take my box. All right. And all I need to do is scoot down here a bit and I find my Stephen Scanlon and Alan Reedy from February of 1865. Ooh. And guess what? There's an image. I have my record. No need to write to anyone. No need to pay for it. Uh, we like free. Uh, and here is my marriage record for them right here at this spot. So this is fabulous. I love this. This is great, and that they are putting all these things online for us to be able to find. Melissa, did you want to show anything from Estonia or Latvia or Lithuania? Um, I think I'm good um, as far as that goes. Okay. A lot of the websites, um, when you go on to it, like Kate said, just go ahead and click the English area. Um, I don't have anything pulled up on my screen, so I don't know if you want to just pull one of them up mm -hmm. just so we can kind of give them an idea. Um, but you either... Lithuania, try. That's where okay. my relatives are from. 
um, you what you want to do is go ahead and look up at the uh, queue where they have the different um, menu selections and you would just click on the state archives or you'll see further down at the Lithuania website um, if you're not going through the state archives if you haven't been there before you just click on the genealogical search section a lot of the um, websites that Kate and I are going to show you have these nice concise specific areas already tailored into their website yes and they're very good about giving you information about how to search where to order from how much it's going to cost you if you have to order from someplace uh, usually good about giving you addresses of where to write and so forth uh, scotland uh, they let you uh, search it for free but they do ask you to pay for the record uh, some of these make you register as well so be aware of that before they will let you even search uh, otherwise uh, many of them just let you search which is which is quite nice uh, let's take a quick look at sweden here rick scar rick sarvet and here's olga comes right up on the top which is great birth year 1880 in Augsburg, and the, she's in the 1910 census here so if i click on her gives me her census information gives me people in the household and boy oh boy i love this big green image button because it will give me the census page right then and there which is fabulous uh, we have the united kingdom that the national archives is really good um, in terms of telling you what records are available it's not so good for searching actual names <laughs> uh, but you will know where to look which is a good thing so there's 48 guides available and this is how to look for the records for 1939 the census records the wills the alien arrivals and so forth uh, i will mention and again they tell you if it's on ancestry or if it's out out in the world somewhere there's also a thing called find my past your library may subscribe to this so check with them arlington heights does have find my past barrington does not Find my past if you're uh, sure you're all your relatives or many of your relatives are in the UK, then you want to use find my past. That is like the database for UK searching. So you might want to consider popping over to Arlington uh, when they're open, when this COVID thing's uh, past us, or at least uh, hopefully during the uh, hours that Arlington is available. And you might see if you can use find my past there. So this is a really nice directory of the records that exist and where they're at. So if it says available on Ancestry, you know you need to go to Ancestry. If it says find my past, you can go to Arlington Heights and so forth. So it's a nice, a nice directory of records. But again, not so much for searching by your relative's name. Okay, so um, before I get started, um, we're not gonna go through every single website. I will talk about all of them but we're not going to pull every single one up if there is a specific one that you want kate to go ahead and pull up um, just put it in the chat whether it's belarus czech republic hungary poland romania slovakia ukraine we'll try to cover um, one or two if you guys do go ahead and ask um, otherwise i'm just going to give you a brief rundown as far as each of the websites goes and how to navigate it. Um, keep in mind that the Eastern websites are not as um, upfront with their information as others. For whatever reason, Kate and I don't have that information um, available to us. We can just tell you what they provide. So starting with Belarus, um, when you go to the Belarusian website, you're going to click on the more tab from their menu and then you click on the genealogy and family history link and that will give you a good um, indicator as far as what they have available for you to research online, what you need to contact them about, although you're probably not going to get anything out of them right now, and also um, how to search their archival website. Uh, the Czech Republic, you want to go to, you, there are a few different ways of searching it. Um, it's not as in-depth of a website like Ireland, Belarus, 
or uh, Poland. So you can either go to the search tab and from there either just do a general search, a search by originator, or they will have a little documents tab over to the far right and you can click on that. Again, it's not comprehensive. They do not on the Czech Republic site, they do not give you a um, how to get started in your Czech genealogy research that you're going to want to refer to the wiki link and then type in the Czech Republic for other alternative websites. But this is the best website that we found out there for you um, that targets the uh, state archives. The hungry one. When you are searching Hungarian ancestry, you would go to the databases menu selection, and then the public collections are going to be number one, and then the map collections. That way it gives you a good indicator as to what the country looked like as far as uh, war boundaries or uh, redistricting, if you want to say that. Um, at the time period that your ancestors lived there. They do have other uh, ways of searching different archives, but those are the two that are going to be most concerned as far as genealogy goes. The public collection is broken down by religions, by time periods, by newspapers, or where the documents were created, whether they were created in a school or a church, things like that. Um, are there any questions? Otherwise, I will move on to Poland. Um, for Poland, they do give you a good step-by-step um, -step guide as far as genealogy. They are very forthcoming with information as far as what you will be able to find online and what you won't. And they also are very firm in the fact that if you do contact any of the religious organizations, and you don't get the answer that you want, then you will be out of luck. There's nothing that you can do, especially even though a lot of the Catholic churches in Poland are, you know, state funded, they don't have to answer to um, any individual or the state as far as having to uh, shell out the records. But to navigate the website, you're going to go to the for users section after you've translated it, if need be, and then they will have a genealogy link on there. We didn't get too much into the uh, ethnic um, countercultures as far as, or regional cultures, I should say, when it comes to certain groups in there, um, just because, I mean, there's going to be small ethnic groups in every country that kind of operate in their own little microcosm and we can't cover every single one of those. But again, if you do have a certain ethnic group, as I put in the chat, you're going to want to use the WikiLeaks page. Um, first start with the country and then further break down. But I, for Poland, I would start with the state website that we've provided with the link and all the links can be found on the Barrington website. Uh, for Romania, again, you're going to look at the local archives link and then from there a map will pop up as far as all the different regions within the country. And then when you click on the regions, what you will find are the within the different provinces are things like who to contact, the history of that particular area, just like the history of Illinois or the history of Massachusetts, um, and lists of what they hold, et cetera. It will all be um, listed right above the map as far as when you first get to that page. From there on, you'll, uh, you'll know what to encounter. Slovakia, this is more along the lines of the Czech Republic site in that you're just kind of scrolling through. They've made it very decorative in that, but it's not very um, organized as like some of the other sites like Belarus, Hungary, Ireland, websites okay. like that. Um, was there a question or was that just someone talking in the background? I just want to make sure that we don't leave anybody out. Okay. And then as far as the Ukraine goes, um, their website, before had a little more information. Right now it does not. They still do have archival um, searching available and you would go to the archives of Ukraine 
and they will give you the contact address if you need to write to them. Some of, um, I don't know if Kate has any more where you would actually just write to them rather than search online, but right now the Ukraine does have that. Uh, they don't offer uh, an in-depth or intense uh, help online at the moment. Western European list, which includes Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. Uh, also, um, that you kind of get uh, three for one when you use Matricula. That's one of my favorite uh, websites. Uh, you can get Germany and Austria, both, and a little bit of Luxembourg as well. So let's take a quick look at Matricula. These are for church records. And you can search two ways. One of them is place, and one of them is by fond, and fond is an archival term just for a group of records. So if we go to Fond, we can see in Deutschland, Germany, has a couple thousand records. The Osterreich, which is Austria, has 2,700. A little bit of Poland, a little bit of Serbia, a little bit of Luxembourg, and a little bit of Bosnia-Herzegovina. But uh, if we look at Germany, and again, these are very much by place. So you kind of need to know a place uh, before you start searching here. Let's try Osberg. Pathing. And if there's a little camera here, which there is, very fortunately, we can pick a page and there are the records. And unfortunately, it's browsing. It's pretty much not by name, uh, no searching by name. So it's very much a search by place, but it does have these church records and these church records are from 1708 to 1749 so and just out there in the world uh, so it's very nice that it's out there it isn't the easiest thing to search because you can't search by name but if you have sort of an idea of where and when uh, this might be a place to go and it's just a lovely presentation of these records And as I mentioned, we get a little bit of Austria as well, a couple thousand Austrian records, which is great. Let's pick one and see what we've got here. And registers 1684 to 1943, that's a lot of registers. And again, we can pick a set of records and start paging through. But it is the actual hand rec handwritten record from 1685 to 1761. So these, it's really nice. <laughs> and again, these are just the church records, but they're church records that go way, way back and they're online here for free. So it is a good place to, to start looking. Yikes. All right. So we've covered uh, Austria and Germany together, which is great. Um, let's, uh, someone asked about the Netherlands. One of my favorites is Vivas V. So let's go there. And this is nice because they've got 205 million people in the database and you can just put in a name and see what they've got. Van Dorn. <laughs> hey, okay. I'll do it, V-A-N-D-O-R-N. See what's here. There you are. <laughs> Whoa. Look at all the Van Dorns. And again, I believe if we have a little camera, we have a chance at looking at the actual record, which should be coming up here shortly, hopefully. It's a lot to load. But there it is. Uh, just waiting for it to finish up doing its thing. Yikes. But Yes, but here's uh, Janeki Van Dorn from 1701 in Breda. And hopefully that will clear up at some point and be readable. But it is the actual record for her, which is really, really great. <laughs> France is good as well. Um, Belgium has a very nice uh, search of the archives as well. Uh, Switzerland has this one that I did find, which uh, is good. It also, uh, Switzerland, a lot of Swiss records are in, are in Ancestry, so 
certainly could search there as well. Uh, I will mention the German for Germany. If you're, again, if you're really concentrating your research in Germany, you're sure your relatives are over there. There's something called Archeon, which is on the, <laughs> our webpage. Uh, it is like the German records site. Uh, it is a per, per fee uh, though. You, they let you search for free if you register, but uh, if you want the actual online records, uh, you have to buy a pass, and I believe it's like a weekly pass, a monthly pass, or it's like $200 for a yearly pass. But if you are, if your relatives are in Germany, that Archeon is the place to go. All right, let's go to Southern Europe now. If you are searching for ancestors in Italy, you might want to try Antonati, which has the records from the state archives. Here you can search for births, deaths, and marriages by name, although it is not fully indexed yet. The records go back to the 1860s, and many have the actual record images for viewing online. When looking at the English version, choose Find the Names. If you get a page not found error, just choose Trova, you know me, from the menu bar, and you will be able to type in your ancestor's name there. If you are searching in Portugal, you might want to try the National Archives. Here you can type in an ancestor's name to find records dating back to the 1500s. Many of the records have the actual image right online. There's also another site, tombo.pt, which has many of the parish records for births, deaths, and marriages. It is organized by place, so if you have an idea of where your ancestors lived, this would be a good site to search. All right, the, the rest of the world, uh, Australia and New Zealand, uh, oddly enough, and I had kind of I'd never realized this before. Um, the Irish, when they left during the potato famine, many of them went to America, which I guess is how I ended up here, but a lot of them went to uh, Australia, uh, which I did not know. So uh, one of my favorites for here for New Zealand is Trove. And this has um, all, kind of, all kinds of information, newspapers, magazines, images, people, music, it has all kinds of things. And so if you type in a name here, it will bring up what it can find. And it breaks it up into sections. So it's got newspapers and then magazine articles, images and so forth, research reports, all online and all available which is also fabulous. <laughs> and so you have the actual paper right, right here. Uh, we mentioned the National Archives of Canada before. People were uh, wondering about uh, immigration there. Actually, my uh, Irish relatives came through Canada as well. And so the Library and Archives of Canada has many, 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 many databases here that you can search. And one of them is immigration and citizenship. So you can check all these databases for uh, immigrants. Among other things, there's land records, military records, census records, and so forth first deaths and marriages. And again, they're trying to get everything and getting things mm. online all the time. So you might want to consider taking a look at this if your relatives came through Canada, as mine did. My Murphy clan ended up uh, in uh, Canada and then ended uh, down through uh, into Indiana That's, and then over to uh, Illinois. I've never really found anything uh, in Central and South America, so we just tend to go to Family Search, which has a lot of those records. If anyone has one, let us know. Um, but I've never found anything uh, that has free records online. Mexico, another one. There's Mexican genealogy resources by state. Again, you kind of have to know if you're Chihuahua or Kalima or uh, Hidalgo or whatever, but you can go to the resources and it will list them here. And it'll tell you if you can search them, if you can browse them, where to go get them. 
that's quite the resource for finding records from Mexico. And there's a South African one as well. South African genealogy, it has useful links and listings of all their libraries and museums and their military sites and their ships lists and all kinds of uh, links to churches, emigration, immigration, and so forth. It's a very nice handy site that brings all the links together or many of the links together. Uh, Turkey, we found out there is an online database, but you have to be a Turk Turkish citizen to access it. Uh, so I have not uh, found an alternative free online uh, resource for Turkey, I'm afraid. Thank, Thank you for much. all those that have uh, responded that way. Uh, you can also use your microphone if you want, if you have it turned on. Um, but if you just go through the chat briefly, I did go ahead and share um, some links um, specifically pertaining to the Barrington website, just because I couldn't see them up top. But um, at the 810 time period, you will see the link that has uh, to our website that provides all of the websites that we've talked about today. So you just go ahead and click that little blue link and it'll pull you right to our web page rather than us trying to show you how to navigate there, which is going to waste a lot of time and only confuse you. And then there also is um, at the eight o'clock time period, you will find the uh, Barrington Library database link 1257, and that pertains to our genealogy webpage. Sorry, my cat is knocking on the door right now, if you hear that. Um, so let me see. Um, Kitty, if you have any questions, uh, just go ahead and uh, email Kate or myself. Um, Kate, if you want to go ahead and throw the emails up in the chat again, mm -hmm. just so I can read the rest. Um, I don't think there's going to be too many other questions. Um, Janet, go ahead and email me when it comes to the Polish stuff in Brazil, and I will go ahead and give you more specific and in-depth information on that. Um, chat only allows so much to be put in there, and I want to make sure that you um, are given the specific information right away, so that's best done in email. Um, other than that, if you guys don't have any further questions, um, we, I think we'll just go ahead and close it out. We thank you all for coming and bearing with us, given that we've had so many technical. Hi, Eileen. Sorry, Hi, Eileen. I'm sleeping right now. <laughs> otherwise, I turn her off. <laughs> um, and otherwise, I think we'll go ahead and you know just close it out with a great thank you for bearing with us because it's not easy doing this type of program over Zoom. You guys have all been really great. Yes, thank you for your patience. So we apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, and thank you for joining us. <laughs>